Thanks for coming, uh, champions for the Maryland game on defense. Joey Bosa uh, played very hard, had a sack, five quarterback pressures. Gary Ann Conley played well, and Eli Apple played well. Uh, both those guys, uh, you kind of take them for granted because they're playing uh, fairly well on the outside. Player of the game was Sam Hubbard. Uh, did a great job. He had a forced fumble, uh, pass broken up, interception, a quarterback, pra uh, quarterback pressure, two sacks, tackle for a loss, and three tackles. So have a day, Sam. And uh, that was good. Good young guy. Good young player. Incredible future. Maryland uh, offense champions, wide receiver Braxton Miller once again is uh, learning how to play receiver. And, and uh, you know, for the fan or for someone, uh, you know, boy, he caught the ball nice. He did. He, he did what he's doing. He also blocked two uh, screen passes very well. The ones, one was Jalen, I believe, and one was Mike on the little smoke screens. And that's. Uh, that's a big part of playing receiver, is uh, doing the, the other things. Jalen Marshall played very well, 89% grade out. Offense line, he had Taylor Decker and Jacoby Boren. Tight ends both graded out champ. Marcus Ball is a guy that's, he's played 38 plays. And um, that's way up, obviously, and Nick Vanette. So we're getting a little more comfort. We don't have much depth there, but those two guys are playing OK. Players of the game, Co. the two quarterbacks, Cardell Jones and uh, JT Barrett. Uh, obviously, Cardell Jones had, uh, I think, statistically his best day. 90% uh, completion rate, I'm sorry, 75% completion rate, almost 300 yards, and took care of the football. Did a very good job managing the offense, chucking the ball down uh, in situations. Um, and I uh, thought he did a very good job leading the team. JT Barrett is an incredible leader, 100% completion rate, 88 total yards, three, three uh, rushing touchdowns. And, uh, and that's that. Um, special teams, special teams here. Special efforts, Gary Ann Conley, Jalen Marshall, and Adolphus Washington had, a, I think it's our third, uh, get our hand on a, a field goal. Third one this year, Adolphus got his hand on one. And special forces player of the game was Craig Feta, one of my favorite players and a guy that uh, does things right. So excited for. Uh, uh, big time home game, night, night, night game atmosphere, and uh, uh, ready to go. Answer your questions for you. Front row, Dave. Irvin, uh, JT is the red zone quarterback as well as he did in that role. Um, barring something unforeseen, do you think that's a permanent move? I think so, but I, you know, I'm not writing that in Sharpie yet. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, it was, I think everyone on our team uh, to see him and his energy, and and, uh, and he's a good player, and he gives us that extra. Cardell can certainly run, but this, when you have that threat, you saw it Saturday, and you have to defend that now. You use the word energy. Do you feel like it energized the team? It seemed to energize the crowd. Did you, did you I think so. You know, I think uh, JT's got the personality and the work ethic and the respect amongst everybody in this room. And that's not saying Cardell doesn't, because Cardell's played his tail off now. So uh, that's a good, good issue right now. Front row right, Austin. Urban, you've come in uh, several times talks about how much you wanted Braxton to get to that 10 touch yeah. more barrier. When you have those conversations with him, is that something that he has expressed as well, that he wants to be more involved? Who do you think? ask for that? Who do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing asking the you. answer is no. What, what no, no, no. Every, uh, every good quality player wants the football, and we don't discourage that. That goes back to my days in 1986 here when Chris Carter was playing receiver. He really wanted the ball. And what did Coach Bruce do? Gave him the ball. So, you know, I don't, the, the, we don't look at that as a negative. Now it becomes a social media uh, fiasco and a selfish where it's getting away of production. And, but when we go out and recruit skilled athletes, we want them that want the ball. And so when me and Braxton have conversations, it's about how do we get him the ball and make sure he's fundamentally sound to do it. You know, you can't take a hand off the runway and, and do those. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was just going to say, what's the right way to express that, that feeling? I want the ball. <laughs> we, we, and I think that's I don't I don't mean to be sarcastic because I've had some situations where they weren't you know the appropriate way is not to have your uncle call me or to have uh, you know tell you guys and then you guys you know whatever but I hope there's enough respect and relationship with guys like Braxton Miller Zeke Elliott you know the players we have that we are trying to get the guys that deserve the ball the ball and they know I think I'd be shocked if you said Braxton are those coaches working at keeping you involved, and you say, my gosh, you know. So the answer is, I think that answers your question. All right, Clay. 
been more as much discussion about these black jerseys as there has it seems to me about the use of your quarterbacks. And how do you go about? My understanding is you don't have to wear these, or what's your decision making process? Decision making to, to wear them, or did they send them and you say, "All right, we're wearing them"? No. Well, well. The story goes as they came in last year, and uh, I think Gene, every year that we, I think every year we do a, I don't get real involved with the uniforms, and, and uh, you know, especially a place like Ohio State where, you know, you're knee deep in tradition, and so uh, Nike came to us, so we, you know, what do you think of this? And our, my first reaction, no way, no chance, and I looked at it, I said, whoa, and it looked pretty sharp, and then uh, Gene looked at it. Ran it. I think there's some channels that uh, Gene, everybody has to run them through to make sure that they're on par with what's expected at Ohio State. And then you start thinking about the student body, the fans, you know, a unique experience uh, recruiting players. And it's kind of a unique experience. So. You pulled the player? You asked them, hey. I think I did. I, I, not, the, not the whole team, because a good bunch of these guys don't care what they think. Really but the, the leaders of the team? You know, I asked them, and, and uh, I'm sure you know the reaction. Yeah, today's very, the black yeah. matte helmet, you, you really like that? I haven't seen it. Front row, Bill. Aside from the X's nose part of having JT play in the red zone, how much of a lift, if there is a lift, and just having him involved in a significant way so that a guy like him, who was, who was a captain, who was obviously the guy last year has a real role in the team. I think that's all good. You know, it's uh, it's very touchy with the two people involved uh, doing it, with the families involved, and I think we're very, you know, uh, leery of that. But uh, I, I think everyone knows the answer to that. It can't be better to have Car uh, JT Bear go in there and have three touchdowns and see the smile on his face, see the energy, see the guy that's worked so hard and has his leadership skills, able to use them uh, more, because he's always going to be lead. That's just the way he is, and, and I, you know, I didn't know this until the middle of the season last year. That's one of the best leaders I've ever been around. And as far as Penn State goes, obviously they had a, a strong game against Indiana. What are your impressions of them so far? Excellent defense. I think they're top ten. They, they, I haven't seen the final stats, but they had a hard time moving them last year. Very good defense. Offensively seems to be they're coming in their own. I have not spent a lot of time. That's usually tomorrow I'll watch their offense. Um, started slow, but they're, I mean, they're really moving it. Uh, so obviously, with a lot of respect for Penn State, their players, great, great players. Second row left, Lori. Coach, I remember you saying that you have a camera that looks at your guys in the sideline for reactions and stuff like that. I'm just wondering if that video this year has been especially enlightening because you've got guys over there, they're so deep that they're, they're not used to being on the sidelines. Are the reactions what you want? I don't, I, I, we don't have a specific camera for that. I might have misspoke. What I do is the video when you're watching plays and I see a big play, you know, I kind of pause it. I want to see the, who's reacting. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've got guys over there right now who, because you're so talented and deep, I mean, Joey Bosa's probably spending more time there than he ever has. Cardell, obviously, is spending time there. So are you seeing what you want to in the reaction? Yeah, I'm seeing a, a very close team, a team that's uh, playing very hard. and. I think that's a good point, but I have not, you know, felt it or seen it. You know, I've certainly not seen it, and I listen very closely to the Ryan Stampers of the world, the guys that know these players and and listens and find out there's not some issues because that's something we watch very closely. Specifically with Cardell, I mean, he's how tough is it for to be the guy until you get to the 20 and then turn the reins over? And how does what does it say about him that he's doing that? I think Cardell continues to grow as a human being, as a, as a young man, as a person that I have a lot of respect for. Uh, maybe that respect wasn't there two years ago because he hadn't earned it. I think that's the same. My thought, and the reason I say my, because I'm talking about the whole program, there's an incredible amount of respect for that kid now and the way he handled this, the way he's, I, I didn't see the quotes, but Jerry asked me about, can he go visit with you guys? And certainly, you know, he's, he's earned that right. And I imagine he would have said all the right things because I, I did, I think he's earned the right to have that conversation. Now we're going to do what's best for the team. But he was involved in that conversation. And uh, like I said, two years ago, he w would not have been. People earn things around Aaron. He's really earned a lot of uh, opportunity to let me know what, what his thoughts are. Far left, Rob. Urban, a little off topic. I assume you know what's going on at USC out there. Uh, without getting into specifics, 
you've been on both sides. You've been an assistant head coach now. How hard is it for an assistant to confront the head coach or to say something uh, that the head coach may not agree with? Just kind of that accountability piece. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I, don't, I would rather not speak to that because I don't know the whole situation. I can answer your question because I think there's certain, and every coach wants that guy on his staff, you know, a guy that, you know, and I've had him all along my, my time. I think, you know, right now Luke and Chris fall into that category. Luke uh, Fickle and Chris Ash can certainly, I've always had it with Mickey Marotti. They don't give me one of these because head coaches are wrong a lot of times. And uh, you need to have the checks and balances in place to make sure. So I think you need to be probably a little bit more mature coach that's been around for a while. And because I seen them some things when I was assistant coach, I'm still to this day upset I didn't fix it because I was very young, you know. And then uh, the older you get, more mature you get. You, you know, you have, coach. I don't think we should do that. And uh, so, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, far left, Matt. Um, just one are you midway through the regular season? Um, when you look at your team and you're Looking at film, what do you see? What, where do you think you guys are at? I think a very good team that uh, gave up 130. I think Chris told me 130 yards to a scrambling quarterback. That you know they came out and, and I give uh, Mike Loxley a lot of credit. They came out and uh, went back to kind of his roots when he was at Illinois as the offense coordinator. Pure spread offense against us. Q runs. The, you know we stopped the tailback. That's two weeks in a row that we you know basically eliminated the run game other than the quarterback run. And uh, they had some Q runs, but what really hurt us, that long one was just a scramble. We're in quarters defense, a defensive line got out of uh, position, and he took off and ran straight ahead. And, uh, but I, I, I like, and I, I disregard the last touchdown against our defense. That was simply a ridiculous play on offense that uh, the game should have been over. We're already, the twos and threes were already in the game. And, and so we gave up 21 points. One was a touchdown pass. That, we were a little bit out of position, not necessarily the player's fault. And then the other one was a, a long run. So I think defensively, I like where we're at. Offense, that was our best performance. You know, the penalties, red zone production. Uh, four penalties on offense in line in the first half. That was the only negative the whole, really, day. High-end execution in a pass game. And um, so I'm pleased with where we're at. Like week by week, you're getting better. And I ask because, you know, there's yeah, I just want to make sure guys are enjoying the wins. I started the season, but you know, I think we're six and zero now, one eighteen or nineteen straight. You know, let's a lot of victory meals been had around here. We need to continue that and enjoy them, and uh, we're not let the drudgery pull you down because Tuesdays are Monday to our Tuesdays are, are a, a grind, and and when you know you get, people have high expectations for you, it's like a freshman coming in here. Why aren't you starting? You know, can you imagine all that? Because you know during recruiting, and, and it's just tough, man. He's high expectations and how do you deal with them and that's as much as dealing I'd rather not go there but dealing with, with uh, when you lose <clears throat> Urban, it seemed like in the red zone uh, this week there was a more concerted effort to run the ball whether that was with JT or Zeke I think it was if the numbers are correct or not it was like 15 runs on 16 snaps inside the 20 or something like that why is it that, that JT allows you to run the football at that rate in the red zone that maybe you guys weren't doing when Cardell was in there? A different type of runner. Uh, Cardell's best runs, if you remember, you were going on sc scrambles. Wasn't necessarily in the Q run. Q run, you'll be a little bit more of a tailback with the niftiness and uh, ability to jump cut and do the things that JT does for us. Um, we did, I think we threw a fade winner, threw it to Mike, uh, but we were running the ball well. We certainly had passes available, but I think that's pretty much you know, the focus of most people when you get in the red zone, you better be able to run the ball. But you're, you're a guy short. So how do you equate that? You run option football or you run the quarterback? It seemed like just because the, at least the plays that JT scored on were either straight ahead runs or I think one might have been a sweep. It seems like things that the Cardell has done for you and, and seemingly done well at times. Why do you feel that JT is better? Cardell can't run the sweep and he can't really run straight. No, he's more the, uh, his yards have been primarily uh, uh, scramble on pass plays. Like if you remember last year in those big games that uh, he, those are, went back to pass and something happened, he took off running. Why can't a guy who's 250 pounds run through? Not, the not as nifty, you know, great questions, but he's just not, you know, he's more of a, it takes a little bit to get 250 going, I guess. <laughs> Third row right, Brett. Hey coach, uh, we all know it takes time to learn a new position, talking about Braxton. 
how have you uh, figured out how to integrate him more fully in the offense? We're starting, and he's playing, he's teaching, and. Uh, you know, one of the things when Brax and I had talked, you know, he's he's got some big time goals and he should. He's very blessed and uh, he wants to play at the next level. And so we take that very upon, very personal upon ourselves. We've had great success developing receivers for the next level. That doesn't necessarily equate to 160 catches a year or 110 or, you know, sometimes that's just a product of the style of offense. Or we like to fully, like a Philly Brown, the reason he's playing isn't just because he can catch a pass, it's because he can get lined up, go block, and function in an offense, a balanced offense. And that's our job. I promised Braxton we'd do everything we possibly could to get him ready to go so he can maybe have a career in football and also help Ohio State. So that we, he's full, as of right now, he is fully integrated as a wide receiver at Ohio State. He was not early in the season. He didn't know what to do. Because the, the, you know, good, you know, whatever it is, we're 50-50. We're I think we're 230 rush, 230 pass which is about we want to be a little bit more yards, but we want to be balanced. So half the game, you're going to be getting your hands on someone blocking. And uh, he's done a much better job with that. Yeah, I follow up with a question about chemistry, because we know that offensively you've had your ups and downs this season. It doesn't come down to scheme, because look, look what you did last year. It's not ability. Obviously, you have the players. Um, it's, it's execution. And what is execution if not chemistry? What effect has Braxton's transition to wide receiver well, you know, we're leading the Big Ten, I believe, in scoring offense, rushing offense. We're doing a lot of good things, maybe not the Star Wars numbers that took place a year ago. And uh, that doesn't mean we're not trying. So his chemistry is great. People, uh, he's been Bodie captain three years in a row. And I'm not sure the question, but has, his, has, the, his, has he impacted the chemistry? Is that what you're asking me? The fact that he's moving from one position to another. Not, I mean, it's been great. It's been it's been great. Second row, David. Perfect. Whenever you do something unique with these black jerseys, you always, like these black jerseys, you always say, you know, I run it by Archie. Like he's the he's the conscience, the program, and kind of the tradition police. Just kind of curious what those conversations are like, and if if you've ever kind of been told, you know, no, let's hold off on that idea. I'm not really part of those. You know, the only time that I did was uh, when we wanted to use uh, Justin Hilliard, number 47, with the Chick Harley family. I did because inst- that was asked to me. Um, I'm not really privy to those other conversations about the um, old-fashioned uniforms. They do everything. You know, I let other people do that. Last couple questions. Left, Doug. Urban, um, <coughs> when we talked about JT this year, it's been a lot about like, how he's handling things and that kind of stuff. But, you know, we saw him play very effectively on Saturday. He maybe wasn't as good consistently, you know, when he came in, maybe against Northern Illinois. Like, how do you think he's played? You saw him compete all of August. Was he as good as you thought he would be? Was he maybe not quite you thought? How has JT played this year? Uh, he played good. You know, he, it's different. I think he's a guy that gets better, like a lot of players, once you let him roll. And I, I'm hoping that's developing a little bit in the red zone for him. Uh, but I think he's played OK. You know, I don't think the Northern Illinois game was particularly effective uh, for whatever reasons. Maybe it wasn't the competitive reps he gets at practice. and. Those are all things we look at, but I think he's a fine player and he's going to continue to get better throughout the year. And, and I guess I'll like rephrase a little bit what I asked after the game. If JT's the red zone guy, why wouldn't he be the quarterback all the time? And I guess I just mean like from a from like a football explanation of you've talked about how the quarterback run game helps you in the red zone, but what is it as you? Think about this quarterback situation. I, I think you know you, you kind of caught me off guard with that question on Saturday night, and uh, uh, I think I go back to the for JT to be the quarterback, he's got to beat Cardell out. There's no anointing, and does that make sense? And so I look at it. I, I look at that picture for someone to go play defensive tackle here. They have to beat out Adolphus Washington. Now that doesn't mean there's good ones in there that we're going to get in the game somehow. But for him to be the full-time guy, you've got to go beat out Josh Perry, Ray Quan McMillan, and uh, you have to beat him out. And so that has not happened. Uh, that doesn't mean it's been very close, because it because it has been. And I'll ask you something now. I think that has been sort of. Does he get three questions? Uh, or two? You know, <laughs> he always does this. I know. I love it. I was going to ask this, <laughs> but I'll just ask it because it's sort of been floating out there. Just out there. Just out there. When Cardale came back to Ohio State, did you make any promises to him? Absolutely that not. That have influenced him being the starting quarterback? Absolutely not. 
Because that is something that people theorize. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely not. And last set of questions. Tim? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, are you going to wear black? Are y'all having special uni? I have no idea. I won't. I wear what I wear. That's not one of my questions. Uh, <laughs> one, you told us a long time ago that you like to sit on Thursday or Friday and come up with a number of touches for guys that yep. deserve touches. Saturday, how close did you come to those numbers? Or do you still do that? And was Saturday? Oh, sure. How did how close did that come to matching what you kind of wanted to see from an offensive spread out standpoint? Well, tight ends, you like to get to have them a couple, you know, and then because uh, they've earned that right. And then also Dontre Wilson's a kid that. Uh, you know, he tweaked his foot a little bit too, by the way, in the game. We had to come out. Uh, uh, Curtis Samuel, we did not hit the target number. Mike Thomas, we did. Uh, Braxton Miller, we hit the target number. JT Barrett is involvement. I have him on that list now. So, getting pretty close. And, and, and does that, at this point in the season? Jalen Marshall is another number. Yeah. Does that mean you're getting close to what you envisioned this offense as? Or do you ever, did you sit in August and think what it could be? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I just I I don't I think everybody looks for, like for uh, some profound thought that boy this is, it, it's every day is a grind man. There's injuries involved. There's someone has a sore shoulder. Someone has this. Someone has that. That maybe you're not all privy to and and uh, or you know a defense is playing a certain way that that's what we sit in that room and work so hard at. So it's not as easy as how to get this guy ten. Well, the defense isn't giving us those ten. So. Um, I mean, to answer your question, I think is that this is, last Saturday was a lot of that. That was a lot of fun on that sideline because you saw guys playing and saw guys executing and making plays. Uh, just real quick, Paul, how what what is your feeling now though that you have found a way to have Cardale and JT involved? You understand what I'm saying? Because you it was good for that day. Now deserves. this is a whole other challenge. You know, this is it's every week. Is it, yeah, is, does that? If, I would love for Cardale to throw for 300 and JT to do that again. This defense is probably going to have something to say about that. It's a very good defense we're facing. So that one's in the books. We felt great about it, but everybody knows this the journey continues.